What is Gucci, everybody? It's AJ, I'm back, and I'm happy to make videos again here right now. I've moved to Austin, Texas, and I'm loving every minute of it. To get started, I'm gonna be doing a video on Rake with Rails, which is how to automate tasks you wanna do in Rails. And this is gonna be a two-part series. Okay, so right now I have a simple Rails project I'll show you guys that I just made, and it's in Rails version 4.2. And the only thing I've done is I have made a simple model called person with an age and a name. And right now I'm going to run rake db migrate. And we, by running rake db migrate, you may know it creates our database table for us. It creates a person for us. And if I go in to my schema.rb file, I see that I have a, t a table with name and age and it's called people even though a person is a, people is a bunch of persons so rails already makes that convention for us so when we ran rake db migrate we ran an automated task that rolled our tables into something new or it ran our migrations remember that and our migrations are always in our migrate folder here they are in our migrate folder at the time create people Okay, but what is really cool is that you can create your own tasks to do certain things in Rails. So what you can do is you can use the Rails generate command, or Rails G for short, to generate tasks. And these tasks can be used with Rake. So we're going to generate a task called DB. And I'll show you what this guy does in a second. So now we're going to open that file. I'm going to do this through BIM. <coughs> And if you notice the namespace, the first thing that's already written for us is the namespace. This namespace DB is short for data space, database, not data space. And that's when we run database migra migrate, the namespace is DB and the task is migrate. So we're going to be putting all of these tasks that we make under the database space, which is okay. We're not overriding anything here. We're just making additional tasks to the DB, to the namespace. So to do this, we use the function task, and then it requires that we give it um, its name. We give it as a symbol, and we're gonna call it populate. And then I'm gonna use the colon notation to make it a symbol. And then I'm gonna, I'm going to also give it the option of environment. Now, what I'm saying is this task is called populate and that it should be linked to the Rails environment. If I do not give it this task, if I do not give it the environment option in the task function, then it will not know to use the Rails environment, meaning it will not be knowledgeable of our Rails models or controllers or views. It will just be running regular Ruby code. So with the knowledge of the environment, we can do cool things. Since I called this task populate, let's make it populate 10 person views. So I'm gonna do 10 dot times do. So it's gonna run this function 10 times and in that I'm gonna do person dot create and then we'll, I'm just gonna use an exclamation mark so an error is reported in our console when we run this in case anything goes wrong. I'm gonna do name AJ and we're gonna do age rand 10. So it's gonna, we'll do 100. So it gives us a random age of I believe zero to 100, just about good enough, okay? So now we're gonna do that, we're going to quit this and we're, we're gonna run rake db pop, rake db populate. And let's see now if it, it worked. One thing we could have done is I could have put a put statement in there so it would have put it out to the console, but we're gonna do person dot count and we're gonna see that now there are 10 persons in the database. Something that to know quickly is that if I, I can run the task again, rake db populate, I can then go to rails c again and do person dot count and what do you think the count now will be since I ran the task twice? It is 20. And now simply to change this, this really isn't about rake, this is about just what kind of code you can do. Since I don't have any validations on it there being the same name, 
to get different names, you could use a gem called Faker, F-A-K-E-R. I highly suggest doing that up, but let's say every time I run this task, I am going to simply destroy all of the person models. Now this gets into something interesting too. And what that is, is other tasks you can possibly make. So something you can also do with this, ta this task very quickly is you can add descriptions. So I can say populates the DB with 10 people, period. Okay, so now this description exists. And this description is really cool because when I go out to my rake task and do rake T to get all of my descriptions, I can look here in my rake DB. I'm gonna do rake T DB to further siphon these searches. I can see I've rake DB populate right here and it says populate the database with 10 people. So my rake command is picking that up and it sees that, and it sees what the code I just wrote as a, a rake task, which it is, and it's under the DB namespace. So I can do DB colon populate. Now, obviously, I could write here as many tasks as I wanted. I could just do, I could do another task where I could say um, destroy, and then make that part of the environment, and then that could be where I run person dot destroy all instead. And there you go. So that's all for rake tasks now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Also note that if you don't put a description for the task, it will not show up in the rake T commands. If you can look here, destroy is not in is not in my console because I did not give it a description. You must give a description for it to show up in the health menu. So with this, guys, you can automate a lot of things. You can run any Rails function as long as you inc include that environment setting. So have at it. This way you could automate, you know, HTML generation. You could run commands simply in the console. And that's it. In the next video, I'll be getting a little bit more advanced, but that's the simplicity for now. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like. Let's try to get 10 likes on this video. And let me know what I can do better and improve and leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you.